Tommy Schumacher. Oh, Robomat! I just can't seem to devise a good enough plan to get revenge on Matt once and for all! I mean, I've tried physically attacking him, I've tried adding stupid things to his favorite movies, I even gave Paul Giamatti acting lessons for Amazing Spider-Man 2, but nothing I do seems to work! Perhaps I can help. Who are you? And when did everything get so... not colorful? I am known by many things. You may call me... Dark Edge. Dark Edge? Dark Edge. Well, with a name like that, I have to listen to you! So, Mr. Dark Edge, what do you propose as a plan? I've been watching you, Schumacher. And I believe you'll have a part to play in my plan for the upcoming Fantastic Four movie. Oh yes, brilliant! We'll add so much camp and silliness into this movie that it will cause Matt to go insane! No. No? No. See, I have a dream that one day every superhero movie will be dark, depressing, and colorless, where every hero is bland and with no character, Gone will be the uplifting spirit of the Avengers. Eventually, every hero will be as gray and serious as Batman. You know how depressing and not fun Man of Steel was? Yeah? That was me. <gasps> you monster! And unfortunately for you, Schumacher, your presence in this world would only disrupt the stream, and so you must be eliminated. All right, I believe you've talked long enough. Well, that was an unnecessarily violent death. That's my specialty. Now, get ready for the encore. Bat nipples! <sighs> hey guys, Matt here, bringing you the latest in movie reviews. And today, I'm taking a look at Fant Four Stick. What? Oh. And today, I'm taking a look at Fantastic Four. Well, if it's pronounced like that, then why do they spell it weird? So who's in this movie? Well, it's got the kid from Whiplash, Hayden McClain, the other Michael Jordan, Tintin, Koba from Dawn of the Planet of the Apes, Freddie Hayes, and Samuel Stearns. What's it about? Well, we open up with an introduction to young Reed Richards and Ben Grimm, who bond over Reed's fully functioning teleportation device he built in his garage. Okay, I'ma stop you right there. You're in what? Middle school? Elementary school? I don't care how smart you are, kid. You're not building a fully functional interdimensional transporter unless you're Dexter. Flash forward to years later, where Reed is showing off his teleporter at his high school science fair, where he attracts the attention of Dr. Frankenstorm and his daughter Sue. They work for a government-funded think tank, and have been looking into interdimensional travel, and apparently Reed's invention holds the key they were missing. So let me get this straight. A foundation of brilliant minds with God knows how much money from Uncle Sam couldn't figure out how to achieve interdimensional travel, but some kid could figure it out in his garage. Our tax dollars at work, people. So Reed gets a job at the Baxter Foundation, and finds himself working with Sue Storm and reclusive genius Victor Von Doom. Okay, I know that name kinda works in comic books, but there is no way anybody is gonna be taken seriously in a live-action movie with the name Victor Von Doom. I mean, they may as well just called him Hitler McSatan. Dr. Storm also brings in his son Johnny, played by Michael B. Jordan, who is a skilled engineer with a rebellious streak. Yeah, and he's such a great engineer that the car he built from scratch breaks down and crashes. He's a rebel! So how come Sue is white but both her dad and brother are black? Well, the movie takes time out of the story to graciously explain this plot point in great detail. So you're adopted? Yep. Cool. And that's it. They don't dwell on it anymore or explain more. Wouldn't it have been interesting if they put more emphasis on Sue's adopted status with her family in the movie? I mean, it would have added a lot more depth to her character and would have given her the daddy issues instead of Johnny. But nope, they just sweep it under the rug. She's adopted. Move along. So after a successful test of the Foundation's teleporter, the government wants to send astronauts into the other dimension for exploration. But Doom doesn't like this because he wants the credit and wants to be the first man in the new dimension or something. 
I think I fell asleep at this point. So Doom convinces Reed and Johnny that they should defy authority and the government and go to the new dimension, thus becoming the first men to land there in secret. You know, despite the fact that it's extremely dangerous and these astronauts are trained professionals and you guys are just a bunch of scientists. But whatever, I'm not gonna argue with a guy named Von Doom. So Reed calls up Ben, because, and the four of them venture off into the new dimension. However, it proves incredibly dangerous and Doom ends up getting swallowed up by a giant green evil energy pool or something. And to think, this plan was flawless before that happened. So Sue brings the other three back, but in the process, Reed, Ben, Johnny, and Sue end up changed by the radioactive cosmic waves of the other universe or whatever. And all four of them end up with superpowers. Reed can stretch, Sue can turn invisible, Johnny has flames, and Ben's covered with The grave is naked! Wow. I mean... I was not expecting to go into a Fantastic Four movie and see the thing's... thing. I mean, I know they're going for a more realistic route here and The Rock's kind of work as body armor, but would it kill them to give them a pair of slacks? It just looks wrong. So with their new powers, the government wants to use the four as weapons for the military because... I don't know, this is what realistic superhero movies do, I guess. But even with these powers, the four don't really use them a whole lot. I mean, Ben's always rock skin, but Reed barely stretches, Johnny's only on fire sometimes at random, and Sue's just... Sue. And where's Doom during all of this? Well, he's completely absent from Act 2, and only shows back up in the movie in the last 15 minutes, completely overpowered and wanting to destroy the Earth because humans already ruined it. So he goes from distrusting the government to a planet-destroying eco-villain. I think there's a few steps missing here. Also, he looks like a melted action figure in a hobo cloak. Yeah, that's not Doctor Doom. Sorry, try again. So the Fantastic Four have to work together in order to save the world. Even though they don't have any chemistry together, they barely utilize their powers, and one of them is going into battle buck naked. Is it... Too late to call the Avengers? So final verdict, four. Out of ten. This movie is anything but fantastic. The writing is awful, the characters have no personality, they have no chemistry with one another, the effects are shoddy, and just... Blah, it's just not a good movie. It's also got that same dark, humorless, depressing tone you find in realistic superhero movies like Man of Steel. And honestly, I don't feel like this tone fits well with the Fantastic Four. The F4 is supposed to be this colorful, light-hearted team of fantastical heroes fighting off aliens and other outlandish supervillains. Not a bunch of emotionless kids fighting off against government control. And whenever they try to add any of this light-heartedness into the movie, it just feels forced. But most of all, they're a family, as well as a super team, and I didn't get any of that connection in this film. The dynamic between Reed and Ben was always one of my favorite things about the team, as Reed constantly blames himself for Ben's condition and tries at every chance to cure him as the guilt weighs him down. But when they try to bring up that stuff in this movie, I couldn't care less because I feel like I barely know the characters. Basically, it doesn't resemble a Fantastic Four movie in anything but its name. I mean, for God's sake, The Incredibles is a better Fantastic Four movie than this. The one good thing I can say about it is the inclusion to make Johnny Storm black, as I felt it added a little bit of diversity to an otherwise white bread team. But other than that, there aren't a lot of good things I can say about this movie. I just want a good Fantastic Four movie, but it seems like anytime somebody tries to make one, it never works out. But I know one place where the F4 would shine. Aha! Uh -huh. My hunger for money will consume all! Well, internet people, that's my opinion. Take- Matt! I need your help! Schumacher. Whoa! Whoa, 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 whoa! I'm not here to attack you! I just want to talk! Oh, bull. Every time I've come in contact with you, you've either tried to harm me or something I love. So what are you gonna do now? Try to give the thing nipples or make Doctor Doom a pun-spouting lunatic? No, you don't! Listen to me! There's a worse threat out there than me, and I've just barely escaped him! I need your help, or the future of superhero movies will be decimated! Oh? And what threat would be big enough for you to enact the whole hero and villain team up to stop a bigger villain cliché? His name is Dark Edge, and all he wants to do is make superhero movies depressing, colorless, and humorless! Come to think of it, I just reviewed a movie that was like that.
It really sucked. He probably had a hand in that. I did. I take it you're this dark edge I've heard not so good things about? So you didn't like Fantastic Four? You know, it takes a special breed of jerk to make Marvel's first family this dark and boring. It wasn't hard after what I did to Superman. And this is just the beginning. DC's already halfway there with their movies. And after I darkify Suicide Squad, I think I'll try my hand at other Marvel films. I wonder how the Avengers will look without their trademark wit. <laughs> You're a monster. No. The monsters are people like him. You've said countless times how much you hate Batman and Robin for its silliness and stupidity, and I know you love how dark and grounded the Dark Knight movies are. Wouldn't the world be a better place without people like him? It would be a world of serious, respectable superhero films. A world devoid of bat nipples and ice puns. I do hate Batman and Robin. But I'd much rather see a superhero movie that's too silly than one that's afraid to crack a joke. So be it. Bat nipples! <gasps> what was that? He's weakened by silliness and lightheartedness in superhero movies! Well then, let's not stop there! Bat repellent shark spray! <laughs> the emo Peter Dunn scene! <laughs> the mutated Hulk dogs! <laughs> the bat ice skates! <clears throat> you okay? Yep, yeah, yep, yeah, no. That one still hurts. Alright, we got him on the ropes. Time to hit him with the funniest, stupidest, coolest superhero movie in existence. Guardians, Guardians of, of the, the Galaxy! Galaxy. No! The Howard the Duck cameo! It's too much! Too much! God, even his death was boring. Do you think he's really gone? Probably not. Forces like him are never truly gone. And there's still plenty of superhero movies coming up for him to ruin. He was right. The Fantastic Four just the first step. There's a storm coming. And we have to be ready. Oh, I cannot wait for that movie! Jesse Eisenberg as Lex Luthor? Oh, such inspired casting! Get out of my house. Uh -huh. Wait. I'm a robot. I'm fine. <laughs>